I worked with the first election I presented way back in 1979. Uh, so he really is the, the guru of gurus on elections. Um, David, I just want to ask you what you make of this result of this election. Well, it's fascinating for a nerd like me and you who like elections and see it is an extraordinary result. Uh, it is a very, has been a very odd story, the election as a whole. Uh, the result produces very difficult problems for all the parties and one finds it very difficult to see how they can be solved with a lasting, in a lasting way. And I'm afraid I have to, or perhaps I'm happy to, I have to say, that we shall see another election before very long because I don't see the compromises that are necessary for an understanding, let alone a coalition, uh, being made by the present parties, the rank and file, let alone the leaders. Is this because of the eagerness to have another election to, to cap one that's uncertain? I mean, rather like Harold Wilson in 1974. I think, in seven, I think in the, 74. the 1974 yeah. analogy is a very strong one. And I think, on the whole, it is... Cameron does form the next government, uh, a minority government, he's got a very good chance, or in the past times we've had a very good chance of winning a clear majority on give them a fair go, a quick election afterwards. Unfortunately, at the moment, the economic situation is so dire that any new government getting in may very soon get itself deeply unpopular. Is your view, then, one of um, pessimism about the British electorate? I mean, after all, everybody knows the problems we're in. People differ about the cause of it, uh, that all, all, all three parties say they've got to be radical cuts in public spending and increases in taxation. And yet you're saying that the person who has to do that will become unpopular as though we were all children well, and couldn't accept what it is that's got to be done. Well, apparently it's the view that uh, Mervyn King holds, and maybe a wrong view. I don't like to hold it because I'm naturally an optimist and I think on the whole my fellow countrymen have a lot of good sense and they ought to be able to sort it all out. I can't say that I've been encouraged in that idea really by all the bromide things I've heard in the last 24 hours. It's quite interesting. Rory Catherine Jones has got some Twitter, twittering and tweeting about the Liberals and a lot of complaints, yes, about the possibility of the Liberals getting into bed with the Tories. Well, what I've got, David, is a, a quick look at the blogs. We saw, uh, uh, we've seen, heard a lot about Twitter. It's important to remember there are political blogs out there that are important. Conservative Home, we saw its editor. It's got a discussion already out there about uh, PR and whether there should be some concession. Uh, immediately, Christian Support Cameron says on this blog, we need to govern alone, our country requires it. PR should not be pursued under any circumstances. But, by contrast, one uh, perhaps lone voice here, Douglas Carswell, quite a right-wing uh, Conservative, is actually calling for, cons uh, the, for the party to consider electoral reform on his blog. So one voice there amongst the, the Conservatives. Uh, amongst the Liberal Democrats, yes, they too, on their blog, Liberal Democrat Voice, are talking about this issue, but they're already uh, unhappy, uh, a few people, that, that Nick Clegg seems to be coming down on the side of the Conservatives. Big mistake, says one of them. Uh, uh, other people coming back and saying... Uh, this is very poor, we shouldn't be uh, doing this. Welcome to savage cuts, somebody's saying there. I have got a couple of tweets. I thought you were different, Nick Clegg. I thought you had fairness at heart. Um, but somebody else, whilst I would have preferred a Lab Lib union, I think Clegg has done the right thing. Love it or hate it, cons do have more votes. <laughs> uh, and just on one other tweet here, uh, quite interesting, Sally Burko uh, has, has been one of the most vigorous tweeters throughout this campaign. The Speaker's uh, the Wife. The Speaker's Wife, mm. uh, a very vigorous Labour supporter. She's turned up at her husband's count in Buckingham and she's gone quiet. No tweets from me for a few hours now. Listen to Sighs of Relief. Got to do the 1950s housewife political wifey stuff. So uh, there, there's, there's Sally Burko. <laughs> Um, David Butler, what do you think? You've seen all these elections uh, in, in close-up. Uh, the, the principle of the argument of some different voting system, are you sympathetic to it intellectually? Do you think it's the right way for this country to go, or are you a first-past-the-post man? I'm sorry, I'm terribly ambivalent about this. I think that the electoral system can't be justified, the majoritarian system, if it doesn't work. 
I've never thought we'd get PR until we had at least two successive elections not producing a clear majority, which is the justification for the unfairness. But it is an unfair system. At the moment, it's unfair to the Conservatives. They, were, they, get, they needed about 7% more than Labour did in order to get a clear majority. It's unfair to the Liberals because when they're very close to Labour, they were still bound to get many fewer seats. So when it's very unfair, you can get, be indignantly pro-PR. But the trouble is, if you are pro-PR, it means that you have to accept we shall have minority governments with BNP, UKIP representation, and other uh, awkward minorities uh, co congesting the work of Parliament. And Peter Hennessy, since we're on the point, what's your view? I've always been torn rather in the way that David is, because when you look at it in the most detached way possible, our voting arrangements are a rigged market. In an era of deregulation and competition everywhere else, we've had this rigged market. But there is also a historical argument for saying that clear, decisive majorities, quite often at times of crisis, are a desirable thing. And the problem we're facing today is that elections normally are a combination of catharsis and refreshment of the House of Commons. <coughs> we're getting a refreshment of the House of Commons, but it's far from cathartic. It's a very, very scratchy result, which is making us very, very scratchy with ourselves. It, it, and is, uh, is if we had a minority system, however, each time, we'd have to institutionalise it. We wouldn't have this bit of paper that I've been quoting endlessly from the Cabinet Office and the Palace and yes. the Justice Select Committee. We'd have to have what Scotland has in the devolution legislation a drill written out in legislation for how we handle uncertain results like I, this. If you had it, could you try it out? Didn't France try it out and then abandon it? Could you try it out and if it didn't work? I mean, we're a pragmatic country, supposedly, and if it didn't work, um, go back. I'm sure that that would become an issue of political dispute. I don't think you'd get a permanent solution for any electoral system. All electoral systems have their flaws and uh, the, the dif different ones are suitable for different countries and different, uh, different times. But at the moment, I, I'm afraid it is very difficult to come down firmly on one side or the other. They all have snags. W. H. Auden, in his lecture at Oxford when he was made Professor of Poetry, said his preferred method of government was dictatorship tempered by assassination. <laughs> That one, with that, there can be no argument. That works. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's join Jeremy Paxman. I think we're joined now by Jack Dromey, who has uh, just been elected in Birmingham and joins his wife in the House of Commons, his wife being Harriet Harman. Uh, Jack Dromey, what do you think of this uh, idea of some sort of accommodation between your party and the Liberal Democrats? Well, the electorate have spoken. What they want is stable government. What they do not want is a conservative government. What's extraordinary about the results last night is that the big loser is the Conservative Party. Uh, we've have been in power for 13 years. Uh, we've had the worst global economic crisis for 100 years. Uh, we've had the Tories pouring Ashcroft money into the marginals to try and buy seats.